Today, we're going to talk about the five best cities to retire to in Mexico in 2023 uh, with my good friend, real estate agent in Puerto Vallarta, Daniel Chemsian. Daniel, how you doing? Hi, Risa. I'm doing great. I, I live in a beach town resort in Mexico. Where are you? <laughs> I am not in a beach town resort in Mexico, as you can tell by my sweater. Um, yeah. But but all aside, I mean, this is the time of year that I start to think about Mexico a lot because it's so nice. It's such a great, great time to be there. Um, and that's why I think, you know, I'm not the only one. There's millions of people who flock down there every winter, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a re there's a reason why they call it the high season. Yes. And we're in the middle of it right now. So there are a lot of people in town. The airport is packed. There are a lot of cruise ships that have been coming and going. So, yeah, Mexico is on everyone's mind. No, it's awesome. Well, we wanted to put this list together because this is what people always want to know, right? People are interested in Mexico, but then it's like, where? Where in Mexico? Where? Mm -hmm. um, so we picked out these cities because, you know, they have um, an affordable cost of living. They have um, fairly easy access to an airport. They are very expat friendly. Um, they have access to health care and the like. So it's a lot of the elements that those of us who are foreigners are looking for when looking for a safe place to live in Mexico and kind of um, hang our hat, right? So we kind of have a little variety, but... I think that we should talk about, this is actually in no particular order also, um, even though I know that you have your favorite, which we're going to talk about right now. I'm not um, one. But number one. <laughs> <laughs> number one on my list. Number but one is? I swear, it's not because uh, I live there, but it is number one on my list. <laughs> because you live there? Well, none other than Puerto Vallarta, right? PV has definitely, hands down, become extremely popular amongst foreigners and expats. Um, and I think there's a lot of good reasons why, right? I mean, number one is weather. Yes. For sure. And just, the weather in PV is, the, is we have the most uh, sunshine year round. We're on the 105th meridian. Uh, so if you look that up, you can see that that, that gets the most uh, sun year round. Temperatures, you know, and during the winter months, also they call it the high season here. Uh, in the upper 70s, lower 80s, uh, we really don't have that much humidity uh, during this season, a little bit, but not, it's not too heavy. And then summertime, of course, it warms up. With the humidity, it could be in the 90s and sometimes even a triple digits. And we're on the Pacific side. Uh, we're in the Banderas Bay, which is one of the largest natural deep bays in the world. And we have the beautiful, majestic Sierra Madre Mountains to the east. Of course, the ocean to the west, where the sun sets. We have some of the most spectacular sunsets you've ever seen in Puerto Vallarta. And it's, it's one of the friendliest places uh, in the world. Yeah, for sure. And the health care is great. Great dentists, great veterinary care. You have access to big box stores like Costco and Walmart, which is really nice. It's, it's a really nice sized city, though, too, right? It's not too big. It's not too sprawling. You can get from one end to the other. You know, in what, 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just feel like it's really comfortable and it's very safe, right? So yeah. there's a lot of, and it's also very popular amongst the LGBTQ community as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I feel like there's a really great mix of people there. There is. And, you know, you, you have a wonderful mix also of uh, people that are still working. We have a lot of young people that have uh, left, the, left the states and Canada that are here opening up businesses or putting their kids in bilingual schools. Um, the cost of living here is significantly less <clears throat> than, you know, some of the big counterpart cities in the United States and Canada. Uh, and another nice thing is, you know, from PV going back to the States or Canada, to some of the, the major cities, it's mostly a direct flight, which is a big plus. You know, some cities you have a connection flight, but within two and a half to maybe four hours, you're, you're back home. So that makes it really convenient if you ever, if ever, if you ever have to go back. Yeah. I find that PV tends to be very popular amongst people who are like west of the Rockies, right? <laughs> um, because it's such a short flight. Those of us who are on the East Coast, yes, of course, we also go to PV. Um, but I think, 
you just tend to see a lot more East Coasters going to more like the Cancun, Playa del Carmen area, more more on the Yucatan side. Um, yes, but, but which brings me to number two, which we can talk about, which is Playa del Carmen. Um, Playa del Carmen, like I just mentioned, is on the East Coast of Mexico. Um, I was just there a few months ago and it has a completely different vibe, I would say, from PV, even though oh, totally. they have very similar things, right? Wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah. I mean, they're, I don't want to say they're, they're polar opposites, but they do have similarities. But for example, you know, um, in, in Playa del Carmen, you don't have high rises, right? Because you have all the cenotes. And if, uh, have, you, have, you, have you ever gotten into a cenote? Uh, cenotes are amazing for those of so those listeners who don't know what a cenote is they're like sinkholes they're natural sinkholes um that are all over the yucatan and yes. basically they're just like beautiful sw natural swimming pools <laughs> underneath they're, rock they're incredible right? it's underneath limestone i believe uh, yeah. and the, uh, yes the limestone you see all the stalactites and stalagmites it's it's like you're in the movie you know, it's really, really cool. But, you know, <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why they don't have any high rises there. So typically in Playa de Carmen, you have four or five story buildings. So and it's and it's and it's flat, whereas the sun rises right from the east. So they get the sunrise f over the ocean and in, in Vallarta, it's setting over the Pacific, over the horizon. So uh, but they both get, you know, tropical rains. I've, I've been in Playa de Carmen when it's when it's been raining nonstop, but it's it's a beautiful place, and I love Fifth Avenue. I mean, gosh, anything and everything, right, Risa? Yeah, yeah. So Fifth Avenue is 90 blocks now. It used to wow. be only a few, like maybe 10, 20 blocks, um, but it's grown because the city has grown in popularity so much. So it's so amazing. So yeah, so it's it's very touristy. If you don't, if you're not into the touristy scene, you don't live near Fifth Avenue because it can get quite loud with some of the outdoor restaurants and the clubs and that sort of thing. But um, my favorite street in, in Playa del Carmen is Calle 38, which is this tree-lined street, beautiful restaurants outside. It's just, and then it's like a two minute walk to the beach. It's crazy. It's beautiful, beautiful. And, and the water, um, I mean, the Caribbean yeah, there the, is the, insane. Oh, yeah, the, the Caribbean water is definitely like hands down just incredibly beautiful but they've they have had the sargassum issue um in the last few years which has kind of gotten considerably worse which is the brown seaweed that rolls up there's nothing they can do about it because it's coming from the middle of the atlantic um and they but they do do a pretty good job of like raking it away every morning because they know that it affects the tourism um but that is definitely an issue uh kind of in that area um but yeah i mean I mean, Playa del Carmen, also, if you're like a yogi or any sort of like alternative health practices or whatever, I feel like Playa is kind of the sanctuary for that, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say the word hippie, but, you know, it's kind of got this, yeah, like you said, like an alternative, a little hippie. bit more free spirit, open minded, you know, healing and energy. It's it's really a cool place. If if. You know, I, I encourage people to go there at least once and, and give it a try. It's, it's, it's one of the nice, best places, I think, one of my favorite places in Mexico. There's a reason why a lot of expats like that area, right? Because you have, it's very accessible. You fly right into Cancun. It's 45 minutes south of Cancun. You know, the cost of living is reasonable. Um, I would say that, you know, in a lot of the towns that we're talking about, the real estate has gone up considerably, where it might be equivalent to some small towns in the U.S. or Canada. But um, the actual cost of living, the day-to-day -day cost of living, is where you really um, gain the savings, I would, th I would say. Wouldn would you agree? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just going to the grocery store, utility bills, uh, medical expenses is, is, is significantly lower uh, in Mexico, through my experience, than, than the states. And also, you know, <clears throat> you're living by the water. So you, you might be paying similar costs for a home, you know, somewhere in the middle of the United States, but you're by the water. I mean, Puerto Vallarta or, or Playa de Carmen or, or Cabo. Is that on your list? Risa? Cabo is on the list, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so let's go to number three, Cabo San Lucas, um, which is located in the Baja Peninsula. And really, I was there a couple of years ago. I feel like Cabo is 
in terms of adjustment, you know, it's a really easy adjustment. Um, it feels like Southern California for some reason, the vibe. And I think so, there's a lot of newer architecture. Um, I think it's actually named one of the safest cities um, in Mexico. And that is because also a lot of wealthy people uh, live in the Cabo area. So they've actually dumped a lot of money into the infrastructure. Um, so you, it's actually, there's Cabo San Lucas and then there's San Jose, and then it's there's uh, a corridor, or essentially a big highway that connects the two. And so either people live in Cabo San Lucas or they live in San Jose. San Jose tends to be a lot quieter. Um, so if that's more your vibe or you want to, you know, your family or you're a bit older and you just want a quieter vibe, then San Jose is probably better. Um, Cabo San Lucas, you know, of course, a lot of the stars go there and, you know, you see a lot of partiers, you see a lot of spring breakers that go to Cabo. Um, and there's good reason because there's access to everything. <laughs> yeah, for my spring break. I haven't taken a spring break in quite some time, but. <laughs> well, what, what, yeah. are, what are some of the things I mean, you like? about Cabo? Uh, you know, the food is amazing. Amazing. I mean, I got to say that, to be honest, the food in Mexico, hands down, just period, everywhere, PV, Cabo, Playa, like, it's really hard to have a bad meal, to be honest. Um, the beaches are crazy beautiful. You know, they have the arches, which is, you know, very synonymous and romantic and beautiful. Um, that, that it's very famous for in Cabo. You see Cabo in movies all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I do find it to, you know, I, th I do feel like you probably need a car in Cabo um, versus like a PV, where if you like live in the romantic zone, you don't necessarily need a car. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more spread out, it feels mm -hmm. like. Yeah, um, You know, you have, of course, you have access to all the big box stores, um, you know, healthcare. You actually have a lot of, you know, Western medicine and Eastern medicine available in Cabo, as you do in PV and Playa del Carmen, um, which is nice to ha actually be able to have that option, I feel like. And I just, um, it's just easy. Cabo's just easy, you know. Uh, there's not this kind of, I feel like it's very, because it's a um, high touristy area, you know, the number of bilingual people is very high. Uh, but same with PV and, um, and Playa. But I feel like with PV, like as soon as you kind of go out of the core, then, you know, it's easier to kind of be more amongst locals and if that's more your vibe and stuff. Where Cabo, I feel like you have to go out a little bit further to find that. Yeah, in Vallarta, you could be in the tourist areas, but you just walk two blocks over from, let's say, the border and you're amongst like more of the locals that have, that have been there for generations. And in and, and Cabo, that might not necessarily be the case. Right. Um, I do feel like things can be a little bit more expensive in Cabo, um, but it also depends on where you are, right? Like everywhere. Um, you can buy your dollar tacos in any one of these cities, for sure. Uh, or you can buy your $10 tacos. You know, it really depends on where you are. Um, so number four on our list is Mexico City. Um, Mexico City, if if you don't care about um, the beach and you want a little bit, you know, cooler weather, you don't want to deal with, you know, just the heat of the summer, which, to be honest, I mean, PV, Cabo, Playa del Carmen, they all, Cancun, all these, you know, on the, on the beach sides, on the coast lines, their summers can be pretty intense um, in terms of heat and humidity, but you don't get that in Mexico City, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get that 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 <clears throat> humid heat in the summer. I've been to Mexico City where it's been quite warm uh, in the summertime, but it's been it's more dry, and it do, I, I don't ever remember it being like hot like in Vallarta, you know, like in August or September. And Mexico City is just so phenomenal. I mean, forget the weather, but just in terms of culture and history, and I think it's got the second most museums and galleries in the world behind London. Uh, I was just there uh, for um, Easter week, uh, Semana Santa, with a couple of friends of mine from PV. And we went to all these museums. We hired a tour guide. And this man was so knowledgeable about all the art pieces and you know, by, by Frida and Diego Rivera. 
Um, we went to Anthropology Museum. He took us to all these wonderful restaurants throughout the city. Uh, the culinary experience in Mexico City is just hands down one of the most phenomenal places you can be to, to enjoy food. Uh, again, from a dollar tacos to like a hundred dollar dish. I mean, they have it all. They've got a lot of Michelin rated restaurants. So if you're into fine dining, it won't be a problem for you in Mexico City. Uh, and just the history. I mean, you go to downtown, uh, you, you just kind of walk around and you're just kind of, you step back in time, you know, and you see influences from Europe, you know, and some of the old uh, architecture. I mean, it's really a fascinating place to be. It's massive. If you've never been there, uh, I don't think five days is going to cut it. I would say stay at least seven days. Uh, there's a lot of traffic in Mexico City. So it's got the worst traffic in the country. So kind of be patient during the rush hour. Uh, but they do have uh, like a subway system and a lot of great public transportation. So they have Ubers there as well. Um, and the cost of living for apartments, you can find places that are a few hundred bucks, you know, to $1,500, $3,000 a month. Really, whatever your budget calls for, it's available in Mexico City. Yeah, I would definitely um, make sure that, you know, wherever you choose to live, um, you know, you do your homework in terms of whether or not you want to be near expats or whether you want to be near more locals or whatnot. If you speak Spanish, don't speak Spanish. Because that's the great thing about Mexico City is that you're going to get a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. So that's the charm. And But if you, but being active and like having a lot of things to do, you know, where you just, you just need to have like be around other people and, and you love that vibe then I think Mexico City would be a really great place um, to retire. And then since it's higher up in elevation, uh, you're just not going to get the same kind of heat that you get, you know, on the coastlines, which is great. Well, you know, the first time I went to Mexico City was in 2006, and I really didn't know much about it. Some friends invited me uh, to go over there and spend uh, like a long weekend. And I was really surprised. There are so many different neighborhoods and you know, I went through like the Lebanese neighborhood, the Jewish neighborhood. Um, you know, everybody thinks in Mexico they're all Catholic, but Mexico City, you go there, it's very diverse in terms of different cultures, um, different nationalities that are there. It's a big business hub. Uh, don't be surprised if you come across, you know, uh, people from Mexico City speaking more than two languages, uh, French and English being the most common. But it's, it's very, very diverse. They have a lot of different neighborhoods, just like Los Angeles. You know, we have little Tokyo. You know, we have little Italy. Uh, Mexico City has the same, you know. Yeah. So I feel like if you're one who really loves to be stimulated and intellectually as well as culturally, that, yeah, definitely Mexico City should be on your list. Um, and so which brings us to the last uh, city that we've placed on our top five best cities to retire to in Mexico. And that would be San Miguel de Allende. Um, San Miguel de Allende, my gosh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There is a reason why people are so attracted to the beauty of San Miguel. My God. And it's higher up in elevation as well. So you do get the cooler temperatures where it could be like in the 30s in the winter. Um, which is kind of crazy. You never think of Mexico being that cool. But then it yeah, warms up during the day, which is awesome. Yeah, some friends were there about a month and a half ago, and they told me that they had to whip out the sweaters and the jacket at night. It was a bit chilly. Um, and they went there just to kind of visit some friends, and it was their first time, and they fell in love. So they extended their trip. And you have a lot of old, old colonial buildings. The The church in the center of town is magnificent. Um, it's It's kind of like stepping back in time. That's one of the beauties about some of these cities is, you know, they just don't build them like that anymore, as they say. And when you kind of can go in there and you just kind of don't think about all the troubles of modern day, what's what's going on out there, you're just kind of like in your own little world. And San Miguel de Allende is, is, is one of those places where it's really magical. Yeah. I mean, the central area has gotten very expensive. Um, but if you just go out a little bit, and again, it's a small city, so it's like you go out 10 minutes and then you're in the suburbs and there's a lot of gated communities, um, as is Cabo. There's a lot of gated communities in Cabo. And so that's where you see a lot of the foreigners and expats living. Um, I would say that San Miguel is probably, if you're looking for, you know, your American or Canadian 
amenities and um, like the big box stores and that sort of thing. You have to drive to Querétaro, I think, is the closest city, which is probably about 45 minutes. Um, so it's not that far, but it is still a distance. It's not like, you know, 15 minutes down the road type of thing where you, you know, Playa, Mexico City, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo, th those cities will have um, those kinds of stores a little bit closer by. But San Miguel de Allende is kind of this gem uh, in the middle of Mexico. And so you do, and even if flying out, um, there's, there's a couple of ways you can fly into the city depending on where you're coming to, but it's not, it does not have its own airport, um, right. like a PV or a Cabo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had to fly in, definitely, I had to fly to Leon and then uh, drive from there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. So Leon is a, and Querétaro, the main, um, airports that people fly into in terms of, in terms of San Miguel, but Everyone I know who's lived there, who lives there, just lives there for a really long time. You know, they just don't move because they just love it so much. Um, and, you know, I think I can imagine just being able to, to wake up with those colors and just, just the serenity and just the amount of the, how deep it seeped in history is, is pretty remarkable and pretty special. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, we wanted to give you a list of diverse cities in Mexico that are really amazing for to retire to. Um, they all are safe. They all have affordable cost of living. Um, they all have great communities to be able to connect with. Um, so that's, that's kind of like was our criteria in terms of creating and looking at places to retire to in Mexico. We've all been like hearing about Mexico, I think for many, many years now. Um, and so, you know, th certain cities have been coming up. I think San Miguel de Allende has been coming up for the last um, few years. PV has exploded, um, I feel like, on the map in the last 15 years. Uh, you know, it's depending on your personality, I feel like there is a fit for you. You just have to figure out which which would be the best fit for you um, according to your lifestyle. So what would you say in terms of these five cities, what do you think makes them special? Do you have like a, just like a one-off little bullet list? I mean, all, all these five cities offer a different climate, different scenery. Uh, you, either you wanna be in the big city, you wanna be in a beach town that's busy or a beach town that's a bit more quiet. If you're into a, a condo culture, then, then perhaps, you know, Cabo or Cancun is more for you. If you're looking at a low-rise or home culture, then I would say San Miguel de Allende uh, or, or Playa de Carmen. If you want big city like Mexico City, well, Mexico City has it all, right? It has high-rises, low-rises, gated communities. It has, you know, the culinary experience. Uh, I, I think all these cities have great medical facilities for you, so that's really important, especially for someone who's retiring. We're over a certain age or if you might have a pre-existing condition of some sort. Um, but also, you know, all of these cities have expat communities, which kind of might be helpful in the transition of getting down there. If you're not really fully uh, comfortable, you don't speak the language, you know, 100% or, or well enough to kind of carry on a conversation, it kind of helps to be somewhat amongst your own, I don't say amongst your own people, but English-speaking people for the most part. Now, Mexico City, they do have a lot of bilingual people, so it's easy to get around. But some of these other towns, you might find you know, less English-speaking people if you're outside of the tourist zone. But they all offer something for someone. I mean, we just covered from the East Coast to the middle of the country to, to the West Coast. And I think that whole belt, there is definitely something for everyone. Uh, I would just encourage you to pick a city, pack your bag, go on vacation, and see what it's all about. Absolutely. And I feel like if those five cities don't intrigue you or you've been to them and you're like, nah, um, I think we have some runners up. I think you should definitely try to check out Mazatlan, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, really coming into its own new re renaissance in many ways. There's Merida, which I love very much. It's 30 minutes to the beach. Um, Oaxaca very City. Oaxaca City. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, no, there's a lot of other little nuggets and small places. I know Cancun is a big one um, that was not on our list, but 
very popular amongst many mm. foreigners, of course, and has yeah. been for many, many years. Um, Tulum is growing. Tulum, uh, for me, I feel like is a little bit better as a vacation destination rather than a place to live, but also very beautiful to spend some time in. But yeah, there's tons. There's Lake Chapala, there's Guadalajara, Ajijic. I mean, the list really does go on and on and on. Um, and so there's definitely a lot of places to explore. That's all. Sayulita, um, Bucerias. There's there's tons of places to explore. But start off with these big five first. Check them out. See if you like them. Um, and yeah, and we'd love to hear back from you guys if people have their own favorites or maybe nothing. You know, a different city that we didn't even mention. Um, I think that the more that we kind of share our resources and. Uh, our thoughts on the topic, the better, right? Oh,